right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get into some basic trig. We're actually going to be doing just the three basic trig functions. And these three basic trig functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. So it's sine, cosine, and tangent. These are all we're going to be doing in geometry. Uh, there are three more, um, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, but we're not going to be messing with those at all in geometry. Um, the hardest part about sine, cosine, and tangent here is actually learning what they are and the, how to identify when sine and cosine and tangent apply to a word problem, um, which we're going to be working a lot of. Um, as far as sine, cosine, and tangent goes, I have a memory lyric, which is definitely not appropriate for school, but all I really care is if you're going to remember it. Um, some of you guys may have learned this as Sokotoa, uh, but if you're anything like me, I can't spell. So Sokotoa is not going to help me at all. Um, if you can't spell Sokotoa, you're kind of dead in the water. So I have another way that I have to remember things because I, I can't remember acronyms. And I know quite a few of you can't either. So what I actually learned, I learned this in physics class in high school, is some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. And that kind of rang a bell, kind of hit home with me because my mom was a hippie. Um, she definitely did some stuff uh, in the 60s for sure. So here's what that means. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid tripping on acid. Wow. Um, it actually lets me know how this is actually, what sine, cosine, and tangent, what the definitions are for a right triangle. In this case, we're going to abbreviate sine. We're just, just by taking the E off. We're going to do sine. And I want to put a Greek symbol here, theta. This theta represents an unknown angle. Um, so sine is an operator. It's like an operator. It's going to mean it's a ratio of two sides of a right triangle, which I'll draw here in a second. And theta, it just simply means an unknown angle. Whereas X would mean like an unknown distance. Um, so sine sum old is your opposite. Hippie is your hypotenuse. So sine is your opposite over your hypotenuse. Cosine caught. We're going to abbreviate cosine with just COS, the first three letters. Here's my theta again, meaning it's an unknown angle. I don't know what the angle is. But caught another. This is adjacent over hypotenuse and then of course tangent is tripping so we're going to abbreviate tangent with the first three letters tangent here's my theta again for unknown angle um, so tangent is tripping on opposite acid which is adjacent yeah. now there are some more so here is what sine cosine and tangent are so if I give you a right triangle Opposite and adjacent are going to be relative to your angle. So if I say this angle is theta, that's an unknown angle. Well, I'm going to use this as beta, which is another Greek symbol, which means a, it's a different unknown angle, but there's still angles I don't know. So let's call this side 9, this side 40, and this side 41. So I could ask questions like, what is sine of theta? So I want to look at sine of theta. And I need to know what my opposite is. So the best way to do this is you can either use your finger or a pencil. You come over to theta and draw a line through it. The line that it's going to touch is always going to touch the hypotenuse here. And it's always going to touch the adjacent side. So 40 is adjacent to theta. You can also put your finger on there. If you put your finger on there, you'll see your fingers touching both the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So 9 is opposite of theta. So I'm going to say my opposite is 9. And of course, my hypotenuse then is 41. I can then say, what is sine of beta? Well, it's relative to beta. This is the hardest part of trig is figuring out where, which angle you're using because what the two legs of the triangles are interchangeable based upon your angles as being an adjacent or hypotenuse. So I'm going to go to beta, draw my line through it. That means 9 is going to be my adjacent to beta. And 40 is opposite of beta because it's not touching. Or I can put my finger on there and you see that my finger is touching the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So sine of beta, we're going to look at the opposite. It's the one that's not touching that line, which is going to be 40 over 41. Um, fairly straightforward. But... So I have a pretty normal type of trig problem here. 
Uh, I just have a right triangle. I have one angle in there, which is 33 degrees. I could find the other angle, but I don't really need to. I'm going to ask you to solve for x and y. I'm only going to give you one side and one angle of the triangle. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to base everything off of this 33 degrees. So everything off of this 33 degrees. So I have to remember my three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. And of course, previously we were talking about that sine is your opposite over your hypotenuse. Your cosine is your adjacent over your hypotenuse. And of course, then tangent of your angle is going to be your opposite over your adjacent. Sorry for the squeaking there. All right, so really what I have to look for is, what am I solving for? Well, I'm going to ask you to find x and y. So we're going to say find x and y, let's say to one decimal place. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to look and say, you know what, let's solve for x first. I'm going to look and see, all right, so x right here, relative to 33 degrees, if I put my finger there, is touching the x and the hypotenuse. So I have an x, and that's my adjacent. And I have to figure out, is my 11 relative to 30, 33 degrees, is that my hypotenuse or my opposite? Well, if x is my adjacent, y is going to be my hypotenuse because it's touching, my finger's touching both of those. 11 is going to be my opposite. So I have, a, I'm, I have an opposite, I'm looking for an adjacent, so I'm gonna come over here. Opposite hypotenuse, no. I'm gonna have opposite and adjacent. Adjacent hypotenuse, no. Opposite adjacent, bingo, that's the one. So that means I have to use tangent because this side matches up. So my angle is 33 degrees. So I'm gonna say tangent of 33 degrees equals my opposite, which is this 11, over x. Now here we're just going to solve this out. Um, I'm going to show you a quick little trick. We could multiply both sides by x and divide by tangent of 33. However, when we have just our individual variable on the bottom here and just a number over here, because tangent of 33 is just a number, we're going to interchange them. So x equals 11 divided by tangent of 33 degrees. Now you're going to put that in your calculator. You need to make sure you're in, you are in degree mode. Do not be in radian mode because you will get the wrong answer because I'm looking for degrees because I gave you this answer, this angle in degrees. So when I do that, I'm going to do 11 divided by tangent of 33. That is going to give me x is approximately 16.9. 16.9 units. I didn't give you a unit there, so we don't need to put a unit on there. So there's x. We're going to do the same thing for y. We're going to look at y. Okay, y is my hypotenuse. I have the opposite. So I'm going to come over here and look. Opposite over a hypotenuse. I have opposite over a hypotenuse. That's my sine. My angle is 33 degrees. And I'm just going to plug it in, everything in. I'm going to have sine of 33 degrees equals my opposite, which is 11, over my hypotenuse, which is y. From there, I can just swap those out. And I'm going to get y equals... 11 sine 33 degrees. Throw it in your calculator. Once again, make sure you're in degree mode or you will get the wrong answer because this is 33 degrees. So we have 11 divided by sine of 33, and that's going to give me my y is approximately 22.2 uh, units. Um, so these are, this is a pretty basic problem for trig. We're going to use quite a bit. Hi, Mr. Buzzer. And I'm making these videos a supplemental instruction for my students. If you found these videos actually informative or they answer the question you're looking for, make sure you hit the like button and then don't forget to subscribe and then click the bell to receive notifications for future instructional math videos.